All right. We are here with week 25 of It's Business Time at Stitch House Brewery, and we are joined this week by Ashley Allen of Functional Medicine Delaware. Yes. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. And we are going to jump right into it here in a moment. Um, I got a chance to look through, uh, you know, your website and some of the other mm-hmm. s- stuff y- y- you have up, up online. We talked a little bit. We have a cool way that we met as well. Another yes. It's Business Time guest. Yep. Um, before we get rolling, though, I do always like to give a real quick shout-out to Stitch House Brewery. Um, they're right here on Market Street. They themselves are a small business. They have 12 beers on tap. Um, I, right now, am drinking the, the Alt Beer again this week. That's my go-to. And I believe you had the Future Looks Hazy. Is that right? Yes, the Hazy IPA. The Hazy IPA. Yep. Did you enjoy that one? I did. It was good. It's okay if you did. We're all no, honest. I oh, you did. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> good. It was good. But, yeah, so thanks again for Stitch House, to Stitch House for having us. And with that, we are rolling. Um, so this is actually a cool one. I have not had a uh, nurse practitioner or anybody in the, in the medical field on. Okay. Last week, we had a life coach, wellness person. Mm-hmm. And that in, enlightened me. It was uh, Jen Evans. And that enlightened me a lot to, you know, we all know how important it is to be healthy and good sure. mental state and all that stuff. But I think, I think it's okay to say that small business owners are in a group of people who often don't maybe prioritize that stuff. Absolutely. Right? They're running and running and running. Yep. Go, um, go, go. So I want to get into some of the stuff that you do now in a bit. But I like to kind of start by going back to the beginning. What were you doing before you decided to branch out on your own? Mm -hmm. What was was there like a moment where you said, you know, I can do this or I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, So what were you doing before you found yourself starting your own um, practice? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I started off in my nursing career in West Virginia. That's where mm-hmm. I'm from originally. Okay. And I started off in the traditional medical model. So mm-hmm. working in a um, brain and spine institute, actually, oh, is wow. where I initially started. Yeah. yeah. So I worked with a lot of people who had back pain, chronic mm-hmm. pain issues, nerve issues, mm-hmm. and worked there for quite some time helping surgeons and so forth. And I really enjoyed that. I you know, didn't have any issues working there, but I did find that especially people in chronic pain that surgery didn't always quite fix it for them unfortunately maybe for a period of time and maybe fix some things but certainly not everything right so i was always trying to dig and go a little bit deeper wondering like what is it that is keeping this person from you know feeling their best and somebody else is having you know like you know no issues or so forth so I, you know, I just continued to pursue my career. I decided that I wanted to be a nurse practitioner as opposed Mm -hmm. to a registered nurse, which is what I was previously in West Virginia. So when I moved to Delaware, I went to school, um, completed my master's program in Philadelphia at LaSalle University. Okay. Yep. And I knew that I wanted to kind of go back into the spine center, you know, working with spine and orthopedic injuries. So I, you know, continued to do that, pursued that. And as a nurse practitioner, I thought I could make more of a difference, right? right? As where with a nurse, you're kind of limited to some extent of what the doctor's orders are, nurse practitioner, or PA, right, whoever right. it is. Hmm. So I thought, well, now I have all this knowledge now. I'm going to make a difference, right? Yeah. Hmm. But I still felt a little bit shackled with what I could do with my patients mm-hmm. because I felt like, you know, with the traditional allopathic model, it's, okay, we're going to do epidural injections, we'll do surgery, and if that doesn't work, maybe pharmaceuticals Can we take so a forth. step back the traditional, yeah. what, what model was that? Yeah, so the traditional medical model, right? So if you go to the doctor, you have a symptom. Like, let's say you have chronic fatigue, for instance. Right. You go to the doctor and you say, hey, I have, you know, I feel really fatigued. Mm -hmm. I don't have as much stamina as I used Mm -hmm. to. What should I do? And Mm -hmm. they'll be like, hey, you know what? Let's just run some labs, see how your labs are doing, and Mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Get the labs done, go back to your doctor. Labs are normal. All right. Um, You know. Labs are normal. Nothing's wrong. Right, right. And then you walk away and you say, but I, I feel like something's wrong. I gotcha. feel like there's something not right going on here. Right. And so what I felt like as a nurse practitioner is I felt like a lot of my patients were still having issues, even though maybe surgery fixed whatever right. anatomical abnormality there was, but they still had chronic pain, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And the traditional medical model I felt was limited to some extent, mm-hmm. you know, because we didn't Just have as much, on. okay, no, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have as, as much to offer them essentially. Right, right. So I decided to continue to pursue things and I was actually introduced to a chiropractor and started working with a chiropractic physician for a while. And 
really broadened my horizons on a lot of holistic options for mm -hmm, patients mm -hmm. that I didn't even realize was you know, a thing, you know, based right, off of my traditional right. medical model. And I just pursued a whole new path. I went completely to the opposite yeah. of going to surgery and injections and medications. Right, right. I went to a whole other option, which is called functional medicine, right. which is where we learn how the body functions. We learn how diet affects our inflammation in our gut and our inflammation in the body. And then right. learning how supplements and vitamins and nutrient deficiencies affect the way the body functions too. And gotcha. it just kind of led me down a whole new avenue and a whole new path of career, essentially. Yeah, it's, it's clear, you know, from afar, this certainly is not my space, but sure. from afar <laughs> that, that you're very knowledgeable, very passionate about yeah. it too. Um, and so if you could kind of like in a sentence, like, so you were doing this and you said, I can do this better. Yes. That, like, what was the turning point for me, essentially? Yeah, yeah or, or, or um, I guess what was the moment of confidence, too? The moment where you said to yourself, um, I, I know I can do this equally or better than, than the way that this is. Was there an aha moment? It's okay if there wasn't. Yeah, know? I would say the biggest thing for me was I started suffering from chronic pain myself. Oh, okay. So I had really bad migraines for a long period of time that I went to the doctor and he said, take a pill. And I said, okay, right. I, I'm trying this pill. It's not working. And he's yeah. like, okay, well then try this pill every day to prevent them from happening. And then layer this other pill on top of it when it does happen. And yeah. I was like, okay, but like, why am I getting the migraines? Like, right. what's the problem here? Yeah. I don't know. You know? And so I really felt discouraged, which mm -hmm. I, then I kind of felt like what my patients felt like. And I was like, wow, this, this is awful. I don't know what to do about this. Yeah. And surely this isn't all we have to offer people. Mm -hmm. And, and then I, I really switched to the functional medicine model when my son at the time who was six years old, mm. he started developing migraines. So I was like, okay, oh, there's gotta be something right, going right. on. There's gotta be something more. So then we started looking into food allergy testing, inflammation, mm -hmm. and and then when I realized that it works, it worked for us. I don't right. suffer from migraines. I don't take any medications anymore. Mm. My son doesn't suffer from them anymore. I thought, you know what? This works. I'm going to yeah. really pursue this. I'm going to invest time and money into this and you know, bring it to the community also. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I, I love where this is headed. I, I mean, this makes a lot of sense. Now, now you know, obviously, as, as a business podcast, right, it's like yeah. there are going to be many people listening who – aren't in that field, aren't headed Sorry. into that field. And so this is kind of that, that moment where it's like sometimes people come up with an idea and they say, I'm going to convince everyone that they want this. <laughs> yeah. And then other times people see a niche where there's a need mm -hmm. for something that they're filling that niche. And this sounds like it was a little column A, little column B mm -hmm. uh, for, for you. Yeah. But essentially like, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like the product seems to be like you were seeing the existing medical field not fully serving yeah. uh, the, the clients is it not customers, it's uh, patients. patients, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you were ser seeing a lot of the existing stuff not serving them and, and yeah. you, you kind of stepped outside of the prescription model mm -hmm. and were able to like solve this problem and said, now I want to bring this to other people. Is that, am I putting words in your mouth? No, or is that, okay. no, that's absolutely true. I okay. saw all the disparities in healthcare, which are still going on oh, for yeah. sure. 100%. And I thought that there just has to be something better. Like I didn't right. get into this career field to right. write prescriptions all day long right. and then have my patients who are coming to me for help right. and just kind of ignoring them, right? right. Like I, I felt like a lot of my patients just didn't know where to go and I felt bad not being able to guide them appropriately right. too. So I yeah. felt like I wanted to learn more both for them but then also for myself too, my own health. Are there, are there uh, additional restrictions in terms of like coaching, guiding, talking with patients that exist because uh, I know there's a lot of restriction. It's like the mm -hmm. health version of fiduciary, right? It's like you're not supposed to say certain things unless you're qualified to say them. Sure. But are there additional restrictions when you work for, like, hospitals and bigger groups? Yeah, to some extent. I mean, a lot of it is really just quantity over quality, unfortunately. Yeah. A lot yeah. of it's about insurance reimbursements. Insurance doesn't reimburse really great sometimes mm -hmm. so we're shackled to what the insurance is going to reimburse us mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. so that's why a lot of times when you go to your primary care physician you're in there for 15 minutes if you're lucky yeah. because they have to produce so many patients and so much volume in a day to keep their business alive yeah. because yeah. they're accepting insurances mm -hmm. and sometimes insurances will deny the visits I mean I'm sure you and many of the people on the podcast have had an insurance denial at some point yeah. right I have a 
way too many stories about yeah. the American healthcare system. Yeah. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, sure. but I will tell you a tiny, just the, to, to ha add some respect on uh, what you're doing. I'll tell mm -hmm. you a very tiny story. This is a while ago, and I'm not going to name any names, but I had uh, acid reflux. Okay. And they prescribed me a purple pill. You probably sure. know the pill. Yeah. Um, and it didn't do anything. And I was like, what else? And they were like, well, yeah. just keep taking that. We'll see. So I keep taking that. I didn't like it. didn't make me feel good. Again, I'm not going to go into too many, many details. Sure. But um, ultimately, I went to multiple doctors, multiple doctors, purple pill. Mm -hmm. Well, why not? And eventually, I was like, I found a doctor. Maybe I should say this one because he was more of a holistic approach. Yeah. And he asked me about my diet. Exactly. Well, guess what? It was my diet that was causing yeah. the acid reflux. <laughs> right. I was drinking too much beer. Yeah. How simple is that? Right. right. This mm -hmm. was a while ago. This is 15 years ago. Sure. Um, I don't have that kind of tolerance anymore. Yeah. I, <laughs> if I drank too much beer to have acid reflux, I'd be in a different place. But anyway, and yeah. I cut back. Yeah. And it all went away. Mm -hmm. No side effects. Nothing. Right. And, and it blew my mind. This was maybe 2004 or five. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind that I had been to two doctors and neither one asked, yeah. what's your diet like when addressing a gastrointestinal issue? Yeah. It is wild, but I tell you, it's so common. Yeah. It's so common. You would be surprised to know, like, I'm just going to ask you, you probably don't know, but just what do you think? Like, as far as nutrition goes, how much nutritional education do you think nurse practitioners, physicians, physician assistants are given in their, you know, degrees? Uh, one or two. I mean, basically, you know, if I were to g guess uh, ignorantly, I would yeah. say, well, at least five or six courses. Right, but right. the way you said it, like of one course, course maybe, uh, two? Zero. 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 Oh. I took it as an elective, yeah. you know, when I was in um, nursing school. But, no, there's maybe, like, one chapter yeah. in all of our schooling yeah. about nutrition. It's yeah. very pharmaceutical-driven. It's, it's very insurance reimbursement-driven. It's very procedural-driven, right? Because yeah. this is where the money comes from. Right. Um, I mean, you know, there. I don't think that the physicians that you saw in the past were doing anything maliciously by any means. I'm sure that it was just what they were taught, yeah. right? And well, I think that's what most practitioners are doing. I'm not accusing them of doing anything malicious, but sure. I am in marketing, and they did have uh, pens <laughs> and notepads yeah. and refrigerator magnets. One oh, even had yeah. a seat cover mm -hmm. of this purple oh pill. Oh, my gosh. A seat cover? A seat cover, like, on his in his office when, oh he, when it, I went to paid my bill because oh this is goodness. this is back when people still paid for things in checks and whatnot sure sure and i'm handing him a check and i noticed that his seat cover is the medicine he prescribed me so That's again hilarious. i don't maybe he truly believed in it he was just a real gung-ho yeah. guy but yeah. uh yeah i did feel because I, I i had already gone through this whole process mm -hmm. when i saw that seat cover and i thought i did feel yeah, I lost a ton of respect for the yeah. medical profession in that moment where I'm like, sure. oh, now everything's connecting. Yeah. This is not about me at all, is it? Yeah. You know? Something you might find interesting that not mm -hmm. many people know is available is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid actually have an open payment system where you can look up any physician, mm -hmm. nurse practitioner, um, physician assistant, type in their name and see how much money that they've been given from pharmaceutical companies, oh, wow. from... Um, I can't remember, th there's certain type of um, companies, I don't want to name any names and I'm not sure how to describe it, but right, um, right. like pharmaceutical companies or um, different types of like equipment companies that yeah, will yeah. actually, you know, they take doctors and the medical staff out to dinners, lavish right, vacations, yep. things like that. Yeah, I think they've tamed down on it probably a little bit since yeah, the whole... Yeah, the watchdogs have shown up. Exactly. Um, but you can still look it up. That's free to anybody to check Anybody it out. who wants to. Do you to. know the name of that site? Yeah, you just Google Open Payments. O um, open Payments? Yep, Open Payments <laughs> Physician. <laughs> Put a little website up here. Yeah, right, yeah. Open Payments. Just Google Open mm -hmm. Payments. Maybe if you can't find it right away, but it just write like Open Payments yeah. Medicare and Medicaid. You should find it very easily, yeah. but it's called Open Payments. Yeah, and I mean, this this series is as much about business as it is, like, removing some of the gatekeeping. You yeah. know, removing some of the, like, if people are confused, anxious, upset. Mm -hmm. And this is my personality. I don't want to talk about how you feel confused, anxious, upset. I want to hear the solutions on how yeah. you're not going to. And so, obviously, you know, if, if they're like, I'm pretty sure my doctor has prescribed me the wrong, and they can go to a website yeah. and check it out M maybe they find nothing and they're like ah it's sure. all in my head because that's another thing like I, I have a lot of family members in 
um, scientific and medical fields, engineering. And so I've always been really careful between being uh, skeptical yeah. and then becoming uh, a know-it-all when you don't actually know what you're talking about. Sure. Because you know? so, that's, that's a fine line, particularly <laughs> in the last four years. You yeah. Know? Oh, goodness, yeah. Th- th- there's a lot of people who talk as if they have all the information. Yeah. And then there's people who say, we don't have all the information. Mm-hmm. And in a normal world, we would trust the people who say, we don't have all the information. Yeah. But for some reason, we're trusting people who say, I know everything. I did all the reasons. You know. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Of course. Um, <laughs> but I, I appreciate you sharing uh, uh, a way for if people are wondering yeah. uh, if their prac- doctors, whatever, are um, – <laughs> what's a nice way to say it? I know. They're um, – Involved in uh, yeah. strategic partnerships. There you go. Strategic. And I'm not saying it's all bad, though. Right, like, right. truthfully, course, sometimes they really do need to learn about the right. new pharmaceuticals and new drugs. And one of the easiest ways to do that is like mm-hmm. a luncheon where they right. have a rep come and teach them right. how to safely prescribe it. So it's not all bad. Right. Um, but it is nice to know exactly yeah, yeah. how much. I mean, I feel like the more information in that regard and the more transparency exactly. is probably better. So I feel like I pulled us off topic a little bit. Okay. I apologize no, for that. <laughs> um, but but um, to get back on, on topic here, um, so when did you make that transition from your last job to what, what you're doing now? It was a slow transition mm-hmm. um, because – simply because I wasn't taught a lot of this information in school. I had to go back and do a lot of this education Mm -hmm. on my own. I had to fund it myself. There were no student loans, anything like that. And it's very expensive. And I think that's why you don't see a lot of practitioners diving into this. And there's not a lot of practitioners in Delaware specifically that are into this. Um, What what are the expensive parts, like certifications and licensing and all that? Okay. Not necessarily licensing, but going Mm -hmm. back and learning about nutrition management and and the functional medicine paradigm essentially and like how to treat patients because sure it's one thing to say you know okay you're deficient in vitamin d okay so how much does a person optimally need in vitamin Mm -hmm. d and what's the problem if you take too much vitamin d should you take vitamin d with vitamin k there's so many little nuances that you might not realize um that you know you learn when you're so how to therapeutically give medicate um not medications but to give nutrients and Mm -hmm. um, different herbal therapies Mm -hmm. to individuals so so i would say i fully transitioned i um was a part of a telehealth company who did functional medicine solely um and that was about i want to say four years ago when i really dove into that really hard and decided hey this is 100 percent just what i want to do Gotcha. And I did that for several years, and then I realized that most of the practitioners that saw patients from a functional medicine perspective, mm-hmm. there were a lot of barriers of actually getting this access to patients because mm-hmm. a lot didn't accept insurance. It's yeah. A lot of it's cash pay, and a lot right. of patients, wow. especially if they have disabilities, they just can't afford it. And they're quite high, the prices, typically, yeah. to access these services. So I decided to branch out on my own because Mm -hmm. I wanted to accept insurance. I wanted to make it more Uh, affordable to the community. I wanted people to actually have access to this. People want this. They want to be able to take uh, their, you know, their future in their own hands to some extent and not Mm -hmm. be, you know, told a medication that they need to take by their doctor. And they want to know what alternative options are out there. And so I found that by accepting insurance, I've been able to really bring this out to a lot more people. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking a little bit before the interview started about you know your client base and, yeah. and you know you've, you've got more people coming to you than mm-hmm. than you know what to do with right now it's like you know I haven't had to do any real marketing yet yeah. because of all the referrals and things like that mm-hmm. and that's normally a big question for businesses how do you find your customers yeah um, so you know since you since a lot of years are coming from referral I'm gonna do a little twist on that question yeah which is like can, can you walk us through like a a sample of a of a happy customer like they were mm-hmm. unhappy what were they doing and then they learned about you and then they leave happy like what, what what's kind of the path yeah. of your of your um you know t- not target demo but you know you know what i mean like you're yeah. the people who gain the most out of what you do i would say it's 
similar to your situation, mm -hmm. right? Where somebody goes to their traditional practitioner for a problem mm -hmm. and they're given a solution that is maybe temporary or a Band-Aid and they, right. they recognize that, they know right. that. They say, hey, I have acid reflux, you're giving me this particular pharmaceutical medication, but, mm -hmm. but why do I have reflux in the first place? Right. Like, why do I need to take this? Right. And that answer isn't always given. That right. next step isn't always taken in the traditional medical model. And again, I'm not talking down on anybody they just mm -hmm. maybe don't have the time to do it right because they're so um you know they have such a structured you yeah, know day yeah. they have, they're seeing you know many many patients in that day they don't have time they for sure, it yeah yeah so i so what i do is i see that patient i take a full hour with all of my new patients to really get into diet get yeah, into lifestyle right. right one big thing with like reflux is not only you know food but it's like how are you eating your food are you gobbling right. it down in 30 seconds right. like that's so, obviously going to cause some yeah. reflux issues right? right so really getting into lifestyle and stuff so having a patient come to me and I'll tell you nine times out of ten some of my patients just want to be heard because mm -hmm. they feel like they haven't been heard yeah. you know when they go yeah. to a regular doctor um, they feel like the doctors write them off so mm -hmm. just being able to have a patient or customer however you want to say it um, comes to me I sit there I listen to them I take time to hear what they're saying mm -hmm. and then we together decide on what kind of labs to do what kind of testing to do we do that testing and then they come back and now we have some answers we yeah. have some ideas and we might not have every single answer we hardly ever do you know have mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. answer the first time but we have steps to take a path to take and they at least have a sense of being in control of their own health yeah that being heard really speaks to me um, a lot of my journey so I grew up you know relatively privileged in this area mm -hmm. um, when I had medical issues I would go to doctors and typ typical story right yeah um, and then as a musician I had a period where um, I didn't have health insurance and then I had a period where I had very very bare bones health insurance mm -hmm. and during that period I went to one of the like family clinics right one of the low income sure you know it you don't need insurance you, you know it's like subsidized or whatever but I went there and I had the first experience of my entire life with a doctor who was like seemed to care about my health outcomes okay Right, mm -hmm. and I'm, I promised myself I'm not going to get into the American healthcare system versus the European <laughs> one. But even that was ten years ago, and yeah. even after I got back on good insurance and everything started working, and I still go there yeah. because they, to me, are clearly driven by we want people to come in sick and leave healthy yeah. so that we don't have to keep serving them over and over again we yeah. want them to be healthy yeah whereas the doctors i've been going to before and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that this was happening but it felt very much like i was uh, a subscription model mm -hmm. you know like they were like let's do this i'll see you in three months mm -hmm. whereas the family medicine place was like here's a few ways for us not only have to see you once a year for your check, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, and I, I'm a little different, I think, than the average person. I, I'm not like a hypochondriac, but I am like, I am like, if something's wrong, I want to know, I want to get to the sure. bottom of it. Yeah. Um, and they just, they seemed just as interested in my health as I was. Yeah. Whereas the ones that I was paying more or that were billing my insurance yeah. or however you want to phrase it. Sure. Um, I did not, I just, I felt like I was, you know, a patient, a number on mm -hmm. a piece of paper. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, it's very personal. What you're doing, obviously, is it's very personal. People's health mm -hmm. is, what do they say? Uh, at least you have your health, right? Right, yeah. It's yeah, literally, true. your business can be <laughs> failing, everything can be yeah. falling apart. At least you have your health, is what they say. <laughs> and and so your your business, your your is literally focused on what most people value as the most important thing yeah. in their life. Yeah. Um, you know, I do want to keep these digestible time-wise. I feel like I could talk to you about a lot of specifics, <laughs> but can you talk a little bit about how, um, you know, some people will sell a product, right? Once mm -hmm. that sale is done, that person's gone. They don't have to worry about it. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about maybe the, whatever you'd like, but the stress or the or the thinking or sleeping at night, whatever it is, knowing that, mm -hmm. that your business is so intimately connected to people living and dying you know yeah like is that is that something i mean you sound you seem very equipped for it um <laughs> seems like something you've done for a while sure. but um you know i think this being a, a business podcast i think a lot of people like a construction worker stresses when they finish a deck gee i hope that deck doesn't fall apart and people Understood. get hurt 
I see. What right, they stress yeah. a lot. Is, mm-hmm. is is it hard to kind of let go of uh, some of the stress you feel for clients, knowing that yeah. it's so personal? For them? I think in the beginning it was worse for me because I was new to it. I wasn't yeah. as confident in myself with it. Um, but now I, I've done it for a while. I feel a little bit more confident. Mm-hmm. I like when, you know, you go to your doctor because you're concerned about something with you. You're looking for that security. You're looking right. for them to say it's going right. to be okay. Right. And if they turn around and say, oh, I'm not sure if this is going to, you know, like I'm not sure. Right. That, that kind of hurts the outcome to some extent, right? Right. But I, and I do feel in the beginning, I did have a lot of stress. I'd go home, man, I really hope what I did was the right thing, right? right? right. I do feel a little bit more, com- not a little bit, a lot more confident right. about yeah. that right now. So I don't yeah. stress about it as much anymore. Mm-hmm. But just like any other human being would, yeah. I certainly do. If, if a client or a patient comes in and they had a pretty significant life event happen, yeah. right? Yeah. Like maybe they suffered a stroke or a heart attack, right? right? Or they have cancer and they're looking for something to offer more hope for them or more help mm-hmm. for them. Them so mm-hmm. that they can recover faster. Yeah, I definitely think about them at night, yeah. but um, you know, but I, I feel like I manage it pretty well yeah. at this point. You know, yeah. I like to think of it as I'm the person that offers the recommendations, but they're ultimately the captain of their own ship. If you you know, if you want to say it right. that way, I can say do this, do that, but ultimately, you know, it's up to them to make the choices to do those things yeah. that I recommend. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's um. I, I have a lot of respect for people who day in and day out are, you know, helping others in such a, a personal way. I, I yeah. know myself just even thinking about, you know, giving that advice, even even though you have the experience, giving that advice and then driving home being yeah. like, <laughs> man, A, I hope they take my advice. right? Definitely. Some of them don't follow the instructions. For and sure. then they're like, you didn't do a good job. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. That's always Did a difficult you conversation. Stop eating all the sugar or yeah, whatever it might right. be. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so a that they follow your advice, and then b if they follow your advice, that they have an improved quality of life. Sure. And then of course c at the end of it all, right? It is a business. Like you do have to pay bills and yep. do all these things. So kind of navigating that um, that that world of like bringing value to someone's life that they're excited about that they're yeah. they're happy to be a part of of what you do mm-hmm. um yeah i feel like we could go on i i, I like i off camera i'm gonna ask you a couple questions <laughs> about like there's got to be some tough tough times some tough moments but this sure. it's totally intended to be about like how businesses grow yep. some of the difficulties of businesses themselves yeah um so I'm, I, i'll do one one last question here yeah. and, then, and then we'll get into a nice little like how can people find you commercial yeah, yeah. all that all that stuff. Um, so you've been doing this about four years. Was there a moment, this is a little bit tied to the last question, but was there a moment where you said, man, this is way too much work. It was so much easier when I just clocked in, I did my job, went home. They deal with all the stress. They deal with all the billing. They Mm -hmm. deal with all that. Like, was Mm -hmm. there a moment where you were questioning whether or not you were on the right path? And then kind of what did you do or or, or what got you back into the right headspace? That's a good question. And and e- absolutely, you know, yeah. it's it would be easier to just go punch in, right? right, and then do whatever you need to do, punch out. Um, one, it's just not my personality to do mm-hmm. that, for mm-hmm. sure. So there's definitely a personality thing there. Um, and, you know, ethically, I wanted to do the right thing, right? Yeah. Because yeah. when I punched in and punched out, I just didn't feel like I was really serving anybody as good right. as I could. Right. And that just made me feel like I yeah. wasn't living up to my full potential, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but in those moments where I would think you know, those thoughts, like, man, it would just be so much easier. Why am I even doing mm-hmm. this? This is difficult. I'm having right. insurances are denying me. I'm not getting paid, you know, right. right? Which right. is absolutely something that I've, I've been dealing with. Um, yeah. But I just go back and I think like, you know, what is it that I, what is it that I hold myself accountable for? Right? Like, how do I want right. to, at the end of the day, turn around, look back and, and value myself? And why, why did I even do this in the first place? Right? right? So just yeah. kind of getting back to those roots of what was my initial vision and knowing that there's always going to be bumps in the road just yeah. because you're in it right now doesn't mean you just cut ties and stop everything right yeah. the easy route is not the the route that you should always go sometimes right, right? it's sometimes it's just going to take that effort and that time and so i just try to think of what was my end goal right yeah. and why did i get to this in the first place and that usually helps me pull through that is a lovely place to kind of put a pin on it because okay. um I've, I've been talking to a lot of small business owners over the last couple months and 
you are definitely like right in that cut. And that whole like, when I get lost, I come back to why did I start this in yeah. the first place? Mm -hmm. That's something that comes up a lot. Um, someone who, he's a baker. Yeah. He had that moment. You know, yeah. other people who did HVAC had that moment. And mm -hmm. it's like, I think that is a, a really important, um, I don't know if this is a term that a lot of people use anymore, but a lodestone. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that guiding. So a lodestone, is it, it's a stone that has some holes carved in it. Okay. And you hold it up to the stars. Mm -hmm. And the, w the stars shine through the holes in the stone to point your, your yep. way. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's, so there's these old, all these old sayings from, like, uh, Native peoples and others where it's like, you know, uh, to check your lodestone. Yeah. Right? Because you start to get confident. You start to get overconfident sometimes. You yeah. lose your way and you forget right in your pocket. You can pull it out. Mm -hmm. And I think um, remembering why you wanted to start the business in the first place, remember why you went on this path in the first place is a, uh, is a good lodestone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring really. that saying back. <laughs> <laughs> but, yo, know, awesome. So, so with that, um, I want to make sure everybody knows how, how to find you. Yeah. Um, and so what, what are the best ways to find you? Socials? websites it would be my website the so website. my website is www.fmofdelaware.com mm -hmm. and then also they can give me a, a phone call to schedule an appointment as well too yep. my phone number is 302-446-4099 oh. all right awesome well yeah. i will put both of those up there in post thank and thank you so much for joining us uh week 25 yeah ashley allen of functional medicine of delaware you Thank it. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's been awesome to have you. Thank you so much Pleasure. for having me, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, we're in March. Next week is Daylight Savings Time. Don't forget to set your clocks one direction or another. And, uh, yeah, that's it for week 25. We will see you next time.